Howdy there, folks. In the last tutorial, we got to the point where we can store data about our poll inside of Redis. It took quite a bit of work getting all of the boilerplate set up for that and all of the dependencies and libraries, but we made it. Today, we're going to be working on configuring a module provided by Nest.js, which is the Nest.js JWT module for producing or signing and verifying JSON web tokens. As a reminder, you can always go to the Ranker course repository on my GitHub and follow the instructions of getting started right here to clone or deget the appropriate branch to follow along with what we'll be doing today. Let's sort of review what we've been doing and what we'll be doing today. So previously we built out this polls module and we've added some of the first methods or functionality to our controller to send HTTP requests to, for example, create or join our poll. And then we've added some application logic for creating and joining a poll, which then call methods to a polls repository, which can then store the poll data or add participants to a poll inside of Redis. To do this, we added some providers that provide functionality to the polls module, including a config module, which allows us to access environment variables and a Redis module, which is really what allows us to have a Redis client available inside of our polls module. And more specifically, in our case, inside of our polls repository. Today, we will configure a JWT module, but unlike the Redis module, we'll not need to create the module. Instead, we'll just add configuration and then provide it to our polls module. Today, we'll really only use this JWT module inside of the polls service, but at a later point, we're going to create something called an authorization guard, which basically checks an incoming request for the JWT and then can extract what poll the user is currently participating in to make sure that their data gets sent in an authorized manner to the correct poll. Let's now configure our JWT module. And to do so, we're going to reuse inside of source folder, we have modules.config.ts, which is where we configured this Redis module as defined below. But this time we don't need to create our own module. We just need to configure an existing one provided to us by Nest.js. And we'll follow a similar pattern as we did with the Redis module where you can see that we sort of use this register async. We imported the config module. We then injected the service which the module provides us. And by doing so, we were then able to have a use factory uh, function with access to the config service, which gave us access to environment variables to set up our host and port. And then we, at the end of the day, we return an object with the connection options and on client ready and we'll follow a similar pattern but instead of returning connection options and on client ready we'll return an object which is required by the jwt module let's import the jwt module and we'll do it here and then down at the bottom of the code we'll add a register async method or or yes i guess it's a method on the jwt module and inside of this, we will first do the little imports and we'll import the config module as we did above and we'll inject the service which is provided when we have the config module. And remember that we configured this config module in the app module.ts. There was sort of a config module dot for root method, which basically initializes it. Let's go back to modules.config. And then we need to furthermore define this use factory. And for this, we will add an async method or function, I should say. Here's what the factory will do. It will get a secret for signing our JSON web tokens. And this is stored in the .env file under JWT secret. So if I go to .env here, you can see that we have, wow, this is a bad secret one, two, three for our development secret. 
And then we can also set a time for the expiration of this token for how long it's valid, which our verify token method will check and we'll just set it to poll duration. Now I understand that you'll create the poll and that the token may expire after the poll exists or in other words, after the poll stops existing. And so this token may outlive the poll, but that doesn't matter too much for us because the poll will no longer exist in the database at that point. So I'm not going to worry about that small difference. And it looks like I forgot a bracket and parentheses here. And there we go. We'll go over exactly what happens when we sign a JWT, what that even means. We won't go over that in depth, but I will show you an example of what happens and what the data payload of this string looks like and what its purpose serves. We now need to register this module inside of our polls and pollsmodule.ts. We'll just add it right after the Redis module here. And we'll just import the lowercase JWT module. We're now ready to use the JWT service, which is provided by this module inside of our polls service. You can see now as I scroll up, I have some to do's to create an access token in the join poll method. And we also had a create poll method. So let's scroll on up here. And the first thing we'll do is import the typings of the JWT service, or I guess the actual class of the JWT service. I'll add this just below nest.js common. And then remember that after we provide this to the module, we can access the service inside of the constructor. Let's add it after polls repository with a comma, and then let's save to get some formatting. So we'll have a private JWT service we can access in the methods. And then if we go down to create poll, we can update our little to do right here with the actual code for creating this access token. I'm actually just going to replace this return value as well. So let's replace all this code with a little log statement saying that we're creating a token for the created poll, the one that actually gets stored and returned from Redis. It calls the polls repository. And then we'll store the user ID which we created right here. We haven't yet put the user ID inside of the polls repository or Redis yet. So we'll just take the user ID directly from this created one. And then what we're going to do is create a JSON web token by signing some data payload with the secret that we configured the module with. Now this first argument is an object with non-standard sort of parameters. So we can put any sort of data in here we want that either the client might need or our server application will need, really mostly our server application to work properly. For example, this token will have the poll ID and this will be extracted when a client sends a request with the token to our server to make sure that we're working with the correct poll for that user. Then we'll also include a name, which we'll see why we do that later on. And then in the second argument, we have standard JSON web token fields, one of which is a subject, and that usually contains a client or user ID. And that field is provided as a standard under, you know, one of these IEEE or whatever it might be, IETF standards for JSON web tokens. And we create this as a signed string. Basically, this creates a base64 string which we'll see later. And it creates a sort of signature. It creates a three part string with periods separating the three parts. And the final part contains a signature, which is basically when you create this payload and then sign it with a certain signature, it produces a certain string. And so if you tried to change any of these fields inside of the payload of the base64 string, it would alter the signature and your token would be invalid. But I'm already talking more about JSON web tokens than I had planned to. Let's now update the to do here in the create access token for join poll. I'm going to also just remove this return statement and copy the code. 
And this is really going to do almost the exact same thing. We're going to have a little bit of logging. We're going to, or sorry, this logging here where we're saying we're creating the token string for the joined poll that was stored in the repository or fetched from the repository with the user ID. We'll sign a string and this will actually be fields.name. So this is actually coming directly from the posted request and we'll add the user ID as a subject and that's good to go. Let's now take this for a spin by running npm run start or just npm start from the root of the entire project and make sure you have docker compose up and running. Our application is booted up and with our application up and running, we'll go and post to our localhost 3000 slash polls endpoint and we'll do so with a request body of what to do today, three votes per voter and a player name of player one or maybe voter one. And let's see the result. So we get the entire poll back and we also get this access token, which will copy and paste. And I want to show you what this token looks like decoded in regular text or regular objects inside of something called the JWT debugger at jwt.io. Here we are at jwt.io. And what I want to do is paste that token that we just created and saw in Postman. And let's paste this. Looks good. And what you can see is that this token contains uh, the algorithm that with which the token was signed, which is HS256. We did nothing to configure that, but that is sort of just the default. If you go to nestjs's JWT library, and then you scroll down to see the underlying JSON web token package it uses, then you should see that by default, it's going to use HS256 for its algorithm. Back here at JWT.io, you can see that the payload of this JSON web token is just like an object which contains a poll ID, which hopefully matches the one we just created, 2K98. Let's check that out. And that checks out. And we have our player one. And this is the sub, which is the user's ID of the user that we just created. Now, the IAT is the creation time of the token, and this is added automatically by the JWT module that we used. And so this was created at 936 Pacific time. And hopefully the expiration is two hours in advance of that. And this is something we added in the JWT module config. We didn't add this when we created the token, but it's part of all of our tokens for this project. We could override this if we wanted. And as you see, the time is 1136. This one is 936. So it is indeed two hours. At the bottom, you can see I already pasted in a secret and I put ow, no W in front of it. This is a bad secret. So that means that this signature is invalid given that secret. And so this token would be invalid if it came back to the server. But if I type wow, this is a bad secret. You can see the signature is verified. That's all for today, guys. Next time, I'm still not 100% what we're going to do, but possibly we might work on creating an authorization guard, which will extract and verify this JWT payload to make sure that the user is sending data to the proper game and that they're authorized for that uh, payload, I should say. Or perhaps we might set up Socket.io to work with Nest.js. Anyhow, see you next time.